Hey everybody, it is with thanks to Triumph UK that I have the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC on loan for about 8-10 days, something like that, to make a few different videos and a review on. Um, this was actually delivered to me yesterday and I used it in my local town so I wasn't going any faster than 30-40 mile an hour, just for a few little errands. Um, straight off, the thing that strikes me is that, and I have to put this into perspective because I am 6 foot 4, this kind of feels like a giant supermoto in ways. All right, I know, I know it's got a 21 inch on the front. Is that a 19 or a 21? I never checked. I was right, it's a 21. So it's not, it's more like a dual sport. It's more like a giant dual sport. So if you've been watching my videos for long, you'll probably know that I really like that side of it. But this is where it's a bit interesting. It's a 1200 cc. It weighs 230 kilos. Those are two things that supermotos are not. But anyway, let's not get into it too much. Let's get out on the road because the, uh, well. Hopefully the sun will come out, but there should be some beautiful roads I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through some country roads. Might even find the green lane. Maybe. <laughs> I, I will also say, this is the, um, now was it cobalt blue and jet black tank? It's beautiful. I mean, okay, maybe if it was one tone darker on the blue, but it's really nice. Um, I really like this colour scheme. This whole, like, well, I'll just show you this. This is Petro Cafe. Okay? So you've got, like, a brushed aluminium e retainer that just covers a normal cap just makes it look really nice they've got the strap across here not sure if that's actually functional i doubt it but it looks nice it's just it looks any... <sighs> shut up let's get going a couple of things to point out uh, that i noticed straight away so this is a keyless system on this bike you know you can turn the key on or off but it basically means you can walk up to the bike and just turn it on uh, on some other models the way that you put the steering lock on is you pull it over to the side and you press a button that puts the steering lock on. On this one, it appears that the only way to do the steering lock is with this separate separate there you go, key slot here. And, you know, you just pull it over and put the steering lock on like that. But if it isn't automatic and part of the keyless system and you use a key to do it, and you're going to do it every time you leave your bike anywhere... And the fact that you don't leave the key in the bike in between means I actually think that this keyless system doubles your use of the key. Unlike a normal key where you just put it in, steering lock off, ignition on, then when you get off the bike you do the same return, it's just that as you get on and off the bike. On this, you have to use the key to get on it and then you have to use the key to get off of it, but then you have to use the key to get back on it again. And it's it just, I don't know, it just seems like the keyless system's fine, but to not have that as a button doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So as I've mentioned, I am six foot four, so I'm a pretty big chap, and this is a pretty big bike. But because of the uh, the seating position on it, um, you know, that I'm straight kneed and straight backed and straight arm pretty much, it should in theory work out that most people of any height should be able to ride this bike, unless you can't touch the floor to hold the thing up. Yeah, let's talk about some figures, shall we? 1200cc putting out very nearly 90 brake horsepower, 110 newton meters of torque, so you can tell from that it's going to be a torquey son of a gun, and it truly is. We have an assisted clutch on it, so uh, it's a slipper clutch basically, so you don't have to worry about locking up the rear wheel. You do have to worry about people destroying you though. Know? And as you can see, that torque is coming in low down. And that's why it kind of feels like a dirt bike, because you don't use a huge amount of the revs. You don't need to. Admittedly, what you do get through the rev range is very linear, and it just continues giving you torque. Just continuous, nice linear power delivery throughout the revs. So, you know, you don't need to rev the balls out of it. You can just use the lower half of the, gear uh, of the revs, get up through the gearbox. Yeah, it's... It's pleasant. It's very, very smooth. Uh, obviously, this bike has got all sorts of, all sorts of different um, modes and stuff, and I'll get into that in the videos as I have this over the next eight, ten days. Today's video is the first ride. It's an emotional response. How does the bike make me feel? And as I say, I've already ridden this a tiny bit, but on just normal city, 30 mile an hour, 40 mile an hour road, so it wasn't quite the same as this. Getting out into the countryside, um, as I say, maybe near a green lane. Depends on what sort of condition it's in. It's not that I'm afraid to go up it, because, you know, I've taken many bikes up there, including an XJ6. It's just they didn't cost 13 grand, and that brings me to the price this bike. It is about 13 grand, um, depending on how it's specced. 
of course this is the XE so this is the sort of singing dancing on road off road kind of one of them uh, it's been designed so the ABS the traction control and it's got modes for off road I wish you can switch that all off you know it's been designed to use this as an actual off road bike so it is like a giant dirt bike now I have seen people you know using this off road um, getting it through some turns popping it over some uh, logs and things and it's reasonably impressive uh, for such a large bike, as I say, it's, it's 230 kilos, which would be a hundred kilos more than my DR. Right, let's wait for a uh, Land Rover to try and kill me. <laughs> That's what always happens when I come around it. I knew that was coming. Oh, really? A gas boiler of all things. I don't think I've ever seen a boiler dumped. Oh, this kind of sucks. It looks very wintry and cold over here. Uh, where, where I'm from, it's all sunny. I took a picture, well, a couple of pictures of this bike this morning. So you'll see, this is what it was like when I was at home. I've only come a few miles north and we're into the dankness, the greyness. Clutch, let's talk about that one very light it is the assisted clutch that the whole triumph range pretty much uses a similar clutch uh throttle response in this mode anyway is nice and smooth what is that looks like a giant lego man head that is a marine boy that's probably actually worth a reasonable amount of money who would dump that up here on the top of a hill unless i'm misunderstanding that wasn't a marine boy and that actually was um like a water heater to go with the boiler I, I don't know maybe we'll see it on my back oh there we go the autumny autumny wintry colors and i suppose that's something to say about this bike you know uh obviously it is designed for off-road stuff and it's i mean honestly i don't know if the 230 kilo bike is ideally suited for off-road uses compared to uh, what you could use but I'd say the same thing, you know, the GS and all of these things, they're these like grand tourers that you can take off-road. It doesn't mean you're going to want to. And off-road can often mean not a road in the sense it's relatively dusty, flat and sandy. Although, as I say, this can be popped off of uh, some rocks and things if you are brave enough. But with that extra intelligence, you know, with off-road in mind, riding this round in the winter on the, you know, on the UK roads, when they are just always wet, covered in diesel, mud and leaves and stuff, it, it could really actually help you out. I mean, as much as, you know, I'm quite used to riding off-road and I, I, I don't feel an absolute need for traction control, the times that I do need to get caught out always have to be when it's wet, cold, greasy. Oh, if only the sun was out, this road looks absolutely mad when it's sunny. Tree tunnels. Click the like button for tree tunnels. Of course, this is my first ride, and sadly, this will get far more views than uh, my review at the end that actually has a lot more information to it. But oh well, as is life. This is a road to take a picture on, though. I need to find somewhere with some nice trees, the light from the right direction. Because thumbnails. Also, I'm planning to get this dirty, so I'd like thumbnails before I'd have to clean it. It will never be as clean as it is now, most likely. It's not really uh, anywhere sensible to stop there, unfortunately. Maybe we'll find something around this way. See, this is what I'm talking about. This mulchy, leafy, nasty, gunky, horrible stuff. Hmm. Where does this go? Remember what I said about it not being clean. This is a uh, byway open to all traffic, aka a green lane. It is not a serious one. I'm not going to go flying up here for various reasons, such as the price of the bike, my responsibility to pay for it, and also the fact that I like to generally be courteous to people on these sorts of roads because you're not actually supposed to go flying around on them. Somewhere here would be a good spot. And these cyclists have gone past somewhere in the middle here. Thank you! Here? 
Maybe up there. A tenth of a second. This is just pleasant, really. I say this doesn't. At this point, when you're not trying to lift the bike, like hold the bike up or or anything like that, when you're just going along, you wouldn't know the weight of this thing. It doesn't really feel like it. I think a lot of that is because it is your conventional bike shape, where everything relatively in line. It's relatively narrow. It's not like your, you know, your big adventure bikes with all this extra bodywork above them that just makes them so sort of. I'm not going to say unbalanced because they do balance them, but you know, it's. You can just feel the weight either side. I am not used to a 21 inch front wheel off-road. And I know it's much better for off-road. But it feels like it's being um, railroaded way more by little ruts than, than what I'm used to on a 17 inch. But then again, equally, I, I use road tyres when I'm doing this. <laughs> Thank you! Always be nice to the people, especially if they're nice to you, because down green lanes very often they will just hate you for existing. <laughs> oh, guys, pretty rutted here. Oh, it does, oh, actually, yeah, that felt good. It just got up there, no problem. What well, was in the little bump. I'm not talking about like this is extreme off roading. I'm comparing to the amount of times I've been up here on everything from supermotos to 125s and scooters. Yes, I've taken a scooter green laning down here, and I don't mean this bit, I mean the, the more serious bit off the side there. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to try that on like a dirt track. You see what I mean about it? It's just talky. It's just big fistfuls of power. Oh no, what are they doing? This is uh, known as Nemesis Hill to me. And they're obviously doing a lot of work to it. Footpath closed. It ain't just a footpath, it's a byway. Or have they ended that one now as well? Though the idea of that being a footpath is kind of funny. It is not a footpath. Uh, motorbikes, free! So how do motorcycles leave? around I'm hoping it's fairly quiet up here you can see I'm now way up above the trees I'm basically one of the highest points around here uh, if there was ever going to be a giant tsunami this is where I'd want to be because the sea is a long way down there uh, what comes up must go down, and I must go back down the hill. Not necessarily under the power of gravity, but it's fun to do it anyway. <laughs> and how exactly do us motorcycles get out of here? So yes, I am really enjoying the Scrambler 1200 XE. Uh, it is, it really fits into that sort of old school, can do anything bike. Before there was dirt bikes and road bikes, it was just motorcycles and you just did what you did with it. Okay, we, we, this obviously isn't that, it's very specialised with lots of tech and gadgets and stuff, but it kind of ar uh, arcs back to that. It kind of looks like that in a modern style with some classic looks. I really like the look of it. The comfort is really good for my height. The seat is nice and wide, no issues there. Like. It's nice, and I'm really looking forward to my week of exploring on this thing. I wanted to get the off-roading out of the way because I knew I'm not going to want to do anything too extreme. And some people will say, that's not off-roading. <coughs> um, well, no, but it isn't a road. <laughs> well, it is a road, but it's not a surfaced road. Obviously, as the week progresses, I'll be doing tests like seeing what this is like in a city, for commuting, what it's like on the motorway all sorts of things like that if you want to uh, see those videos please do hit that subscribe button uh, i'm very close to 100k now and i would it would be really cool to get that done by the end of the year but i think it's quite unlikely but you can help by smashing that like button 
uh, uh, and oh well, you, yes that does help because it helps bring more people into the videos but also hitting the subscribe button if you're not subscribed uh, if you want to help support this channel please consider doing that through patreon links in the description it's as little as a dollar a month and you get all sorts of benefits and stuff from that portsmouth clanfield i want to go to portsmouth way so let's go this way so yes until the next one bye bye